for those of you who need to go further than just the clutch and forks, I wanted to make this video showing how to separate the case halves and inspecting the common issues there. I'm going to go around first and disconnect the harness everywhere and remove the whole harness. You're going to need to unbolt the actuators here and slide them out and get them out with the harness. And you will have to remove the TCM. Mine's already off, but it's held on with four 10 millimeter bolts. I'm using a pick to pop up the red levers on the connectors. Got the harness off of here. If you're not sure how to get to this point in the first place, check out my video on clutch and fork replacement and it'll show you how to get the clutch and forks out. Okay, I hammered a seal puller into this seal and I'm pulling it out. Just the outer one. You don't have to pull that inner one out, just this one. Okay, get you your snap ring pliers and remove that snap ring right there. It's one time use. snap ring pliers just squeeze it apart with the pliers and pull it out that is your input shaft snap ring you're going to want to punch this uh, access plug out to remove the range sensor lever I've got an extension and a hammer I'm gonna punch it through it's out with that out of the way you can access your Torx 45 bolt that is holding the lever down for the range okay uh, I use an impact to take this off it makes it a little easier there you go I've got the transmission facing this way now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the plug right here that holds the detent in and then I'm gonna take the range sensor out two eight millimeter bolts and I believe that's a 10 or an 8, I'll let you know. It is a hex 10 millimeter. Time for the range sensor. Okay, if you look in here straight down, you will see the detent right here. Um, right in here and uh, if you can push that back a little bit that's that'll help but uh, otherwise when you pull the case have up it's going to drag a little bit on the uh, mechanism for the gear selector it's not gonna necessarily hurt it just be mindful of that I'm gonna leave it in and just keep an eye on it I've got the transmission face down I'm gonna go ahead and uh, well first take note of these 10 millimeter bolts these two pair of three I'm going to mention them later, okay? Don't do anything with them now. Okay. But go all the way around and remove these inverted Torx bolts. They are size E12. That is E12. Just go all the way around. And leave these inverted ones in on the other side. You're going to save that for later. Just all the way around. Okay, they're all loose. I'm going to pull them all out by hand. I believe they're all the same size. Got the transmission flipped back over this way. And I do have something supporting the back so it doesn't rock. Here are some tool numbers here. This is the part I'm going to use right here to separate the case halves. You're going to need to rotate this around until you get a screw hole lined up with the bell housing on each side. And then once you have two holes lined up, make sure that the hole here is still lined up with this uh, spacer you just put on. Okay, I've got some screw holes lined up. See? Right here. I'll be able to thread a bolt in. This is still lined up in the center here. And... Over here, this bolt hole is lined up. Okay, I've got hardware from the kit in here. It's a bolt and a nut, just finger tight, nothing crazy on each side. Now I'm gonna get the threaded rod in here. All right, thread it down as much as you can. The threads are a little worn on this. Almost forgot to take these three bolts out. I'm sorry, there's two of them, two. 
the one that I the ones that I said to hold off on for now. Take those out now. 22 millimeter socket. Okay. You're gonna to want to go clockwise. So tighten it with the impact. And if you did not pull the detent out, be mindful. Make sure you don't hear any bad noises. Uh, you may need to straighten out the fins on the range sensor if you if it pushes on it too much, which you should be alright, just be mindful. Keep a close eye on the case tabs, make sure they're evenly pulling up. Something's not right. It's fine, I just had to go a little further. There you go. You have successfully pulled the case half with the input shaft bearing. You've pulled that up off the shaft. Now you can remove the tool. You've got the rod out of there. And now, in theory, <gasps> lift straight up with the tool and you'll be able to pull the case half off. Okay, I slid it straight up and flipped it over on its back. Do me be mindful, you have these two plastic oil feed tubes right here that can get damaged if you're not careful. Okay, so here's your input shaft bearing right here. All right, it's uh, got a retainer on it held on with inverted Torx bolts. Take those inverted Torx bolts off. You'll be able to punch the bearing out, and when you put the new bearing in, just get it flush right here, all the way around. Uh, you're supposed to replace these bolts. There's supposedly one-time use, so keep that in mind. If your input shaft bearing was worn and had play in it, check the condition of the teeth here. They should look pretty clear like that. If they're pitted or chipped or anything, replace them. Replace this uh, input shaft here. Also inspect the teeth here. While you're in here, common issues. Let's see. This is my personal transmission out of my focus, and I believe I had noisy differential bearings, which is the, this is the final drive right here. Oh, real quick, um, don't forget to just double check that your uh, shifter rod's okay and didn't get damaged from the from the uh, this right here. And mine looks okay. Anyway, differential bearings. Um, this is the upper one here. Check for hitting or corrosion. This one looks fine. Check the bearing race. Check for pitting and corrosion, or, well, just pitting, actually. And I don't see any pitting on that. I'll show you an example here probably in a minute, or a moment here. Take your final drive, pull it out. I should have some pitted bearings in here. Because that's what I, I'm sorry for the angle there. No, I don't have pitted bearings. But you would see obvious damage to the rollers on these if they're worn. And same here, you would see like gouging and stuff in the bearing race if the bearing was pitted here. So that means I have another bearing issue. Anyway, that's no big deal. That's not why we're here today. So at this point, I've covered replacement of the input shaft bearing. You just when, Once you get this off, it punches out and you pop the new one in flush here and put the uh, strap back on in this orientation. I've covered inspection of the differential bearings, which is another common issue. And I will co uh, cover the last uh, common issue here, and that would be the shift drum stops breaking off the case in the transmission. This one's fine. This is the lower shift drum. I don't see issues out of that. But this one, on the other hand, is a different story. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this clock gear off of here and not drop anything down in there. Set that aside. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to pull up on this right here and pull it out of the way. Just take some finagling. Okay, this uh, shift drum stops in excellent condition. You see how it's uh, nice and solid and has sharp corners. It's not dulled and beat up. Um, what happens on these, it seems like there's a crack forming. That might just be the casting. What happens on these is this just mushrooms and shears and breaks right off and then it won't engage any gear. So if you've got this transmission apart, always inspect this. That is the upper shift drum here. Always inspect that. You'll need a new case if it's broken. I have got a lot of debris on the uh, magnet right there. That indicates quite a bit of damage. 
probably from that bearing, whichever bearing that is. All right, so once again, that covers the common issues. If you want to go further on the teardown, you will need this special service tool. See this table here, this entire thing. If you Google DPS6 transmission table, you should find it. Um, uh, take note of the provisions on here. This is for a shift drum, uh, shift drum right here. It slides into that. This slides into another shift drum, I believe. No. I'm sorry. That's for the. This goes into the output shafts. Uh, one of the, the output shafts here, and that goes on that inner shaft. Like you take the table upside down and sit it on here, and get everything popped into place. Take the entire transmission with the table, flip it upside down, sit it on the table. And do you remember those 10 millimeter bolts I mentioned earlier? Take all those out, and then you'll be able to slide the case right off, and you'll have access to all your shift forks and synchronizers to rebuild. In my case, usually when there's grinding synchronizers, I will end up getting a low mileage use transmission, or if it's a customer at the dealership, I'll quote a new transmission. Because most of the time, if not all the time, when a synchronizer's grinding, um, you'll have debris like this floating around and getting into all the other bearings, and at that point, might as well quote a new transmission. No sense in spending $5,000 rebuilding a transmission just to come back a few months later. Um, okay, so I hope this helps. Please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll have a lot more videos like this. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.